So last weekend, I was up at Bob's machine shop helping him and Ryan do some dyno work on the 5.3 junkyard dog engine. We started off with fuel injection and then switched to a carburetor using a dual plane intake from Holly. The engine made 417 horsepower with EFI, but once we put the carburetor on, we had to sort through some ignition timing problems before we could finally start making some good pulls. I quickly realized that the intake manifold we're using was having some fuel distribution issues that got progressively worse after we put it on E85. But regardless, it still posted the best horsepower number with a carburetor. After making just over 430 horsepower on E85, I decided that if we wanted to push this thing any further, we were going to need a single plane intake. So I went straight into Jegs to see Uncle Terry to pick up a new intake that should help solve some of these fuel distribution problems. When I put it on E85, it's like the more fuel I have flowing through the intake manifold, right. the unhappier it gets. It just does not like it. So I want to try a single plane on it. Well, these on the test, the test that I read about it, take the dual plane off, put this on 30 horsepower. Oh. That's all they changed. <laughs> you sold that's, me. And that's, <laughs> and that's, that's on with an XP950, XP950 Ultra. Well, that's what we have. We had a 950 XRB um, ATM carburetor on. Wouldn't shock me, man. It, it was 30 horsepower difference. Same camshaft, same timing, same, same everything. Just an intake swap. Just an intake swap. You got me, Uncle Terry. Yeah. You got me. Okay. I think it'll I think it'll do you some justice. All right, we'll see. The fuel distribution problems that we're fighting are very common to LS and small block Ford engines, but not so much on small block Chevys. The Turbo Fire V8 introduced in 1955 was a revolutionary new engine that was designed to be a lightweight, economical, yet powerful alternative to the inline six-cylinder engines that Chevrolet was known for. Chevrolet engineers gathered information and technology from other GM brands and designed the intake manifold to be used with a centrally located carburetor from day one. In doing so, they designed the intake manifold to have Siamese intake runners in order to keep all of the intake ports approximately the same length between the cylinder head and the carburetor through the intake manifold. This design dramatically increased fuel economy and efficiency and made for a much smoother running engine with much improved hot and cold start characteristics. Now obviously the LS engines were never intended to be run with a carburetor. With multi-point fuel injection it doesn't matter what the orientation is of the intake runners. But if you happen to decide to put a carburetor on, be prepared to fight these same battles. And I'd advise to use a single plane intake rather than a dual plane for anything other than a pickup truck, and especially with E85. Which, by the way, the carburetor spacer worked just fine on gas, but on E85, it increased our problems with cylinder-to-cylinder -cylinder fuel distribution. By Tuesday morning, we were back to work in the shop trying to get ready for sick week. Tanner was busy swapping slicks out for 315 drag radials on the 55, and he decided to put new brakes on the back of the car after finding an axle seal leaking. Meanwhile, out in the new shop out back, the boys are working on the Falcon, putting a new engine in it, and preparing to build a new turbo kit. While they're waiting on a new set of tubular headers to come in, they switched gears and worked on the suspension on the back of the orange Nova. Currently, my Nova is in a holding pattern until we can get the 55 off the lift up in the front garage. Meanwhile, in at Jack's Wax, the guys are busy working on Bob's truck, trying to erase 10 years of farm use and sitting outside. Zach took some measurements on the clear coat and began masking the truck up so he can start cutting and polishing the paint to bring the shine back. To be quite honest, I thought the truck looked perfectly fine if it would have just had a bath and maybe a wax job. I had no idea how beautiful the color on that truck would be once Zach finishes polishing it. Meanwhile, up at the machine shop, progress continues on my pump gas engine. Bob was working on double checking the valve spring pressures on my new Super 230 Trick Flow cylinder heads and balancing the crankshaft. He's already got the block bored and honed and cleaned up. It's a block that you've seen on this channel many times, easily recognizable by the blue paint. It's the original Speedmaster cast iron block that we had in Tommy's S10 back when it was a 415 nitrous engine. 
Tommy's truck had run a best of 560 at 127 miles an hour on nitrous, but after being bored and honed a few times, the block is just about the end of its life cycle. But it's plenty good enough to build a pump gas motor out of, so long as we gap the rings right and don't get too carried away with the tune-up. A brand new set of SCAT 6-inch rods will be installed on these J&E two-valve relief flat-top pistons set up for a 4-inch stroke. This should make a really nice engine for my Malibu. So the main reason we're working on this pump gas engine is so that we can run the Malibu on pump gas. I can also put it on E85 if I want to, but the main reason is so that when we go on drag week or if we go on sick week or whatever, Billy and I can stay right together and he doesn't have to make any trips out of his way to go to an E85 station like I have to. Like when we were down in New Orleans, it, uh, you know, sometimes you can run into some problems on the road. Sometimes you pull into a filling station that says they've got E85 and the E85 pumps are out of order and then that's the only station for 40 or 50 miles and then you're just stuck. Also, you know, we kind of got stuck in that traffic jam on the I-10 bridge and luckily we had full tank of fuel there. Uh, but, you know, things happen like that sometimes and the E85 thing is kind of nerve wracking every once in a while if you get stuck in just the right situation. To keep us uh, together, like when we're cruising on drag week or sick week, whatever. Uh, Billy's 55 is probably always going to be on pump gas. Uh, and so I want to put my Malibu on pump gas. Now that doesn't mean I can't switch to E85 if I'm just running around up home, you know, and I, and I want to put it on E85 in the summertime if we're just cruising around locally. I can do that. I can just switch the carburetor out, drain the tank, put E85 in it, and we're good to go. But currently the 421 that's in my Malibu is at about 12 and a half, 13 to one compression. And with that much compression, I can't get by with pump gas. I'd have to at very least mix race gas with it, which means you have to carry race gas and then guess about the ratio of race gas and pump gas that's in the tank. And that's just a pain in the ass. And I don't want to deal with that. So we're going to build this little pump gas engine. And <laughs> it, I, I say little, but it's not actually very little. Uh, this block has been used and used and used, and it's about at its maximum bore size, which is 4185. And that, with the four inch stroke crank that I've got, puts us at about 440 cubic inches. So, although we will be losing compression and it'll be on pump gas, we're also going to gain some power just due to the fact that it's going to have more cubic inch. And it's going to be interesting because the 427 that we built and gave away that I had in my Nova. This is almost identical, the same combination that was in it, just with a bigger bore. So instead of 427 inches, it's 440. But I've got, uh, I've got a camshaft coming. I've got a few odds and ends that are hanging out there that I'm waiting on to finish this thing. But it should make a really, really nice pump gas street motor to put in my Malibu or whatever, you know, but right now the, the, uh, the idea is just to put it in the Malibu and, uh, hopefully it doesn't slow the car down too much. I, I don't know. It, it may go faster. I don't know on pump gas, but it's, it's a tall order because that 421 runs really good at 3,850 pounds. That car has been 10 fifties at, well, 10 sixties with me in it, 10 fifties with Jimmy Dale in it. So 10 sixties at 126 miles an hour through the mufflers, just the way I drive it every day. And uh, so it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting to see what it does. Once I got done filming up at the machine shop, I drove back to our house to check on Tanner, who seems to be struggling with the brakes on the 55. What's going on? Gotta bleed some brakes. Oh, you ready to bleed brakes? Sure well, let's get it done. How did uh, the parts situation come out? Did Mark get you hooked up? Yeah, he got me the right uh, brake shoes this time. They're, this time? Yeah, the first ones he sent were a little bit too wide. Oh. The wouldn't work correctly, so we got it all fixed up. <laughs> Another parts situation. Well, well, well. Throughout the day, I was getting reports of incorrect parts being delivered and incorrect parts being ordered. Pedals down. Sometimes things just don't go as planned. It's not going down. It was at this point that I realized that we may have a serious problem. But I didn't want to speak that problem into existence because Tanner's having a rough enough day as it is. 
down. Not really. No. More problems. Evidently, there's something wrong with the master cylinder. I don't know. It's It had some contamination in it. And now when you go to bleed the brakes, you push the brake pedal down, you get fluid out of the rears, and then it's like the piston is sticking in the bore of the master cylinder and it won't come back and it won't, it won't do anything. So we got Mark getting us a new master cylinder, but we won't have that till in the morning. We sent Mark a picture of the master cylinder and he asked us to pull it off and send a picture of the plunger side. I'm on it. Mark needs to know whether the hole for the push rod is a deep hole or a shallow hole. That way he can order the correct one. Would you say that's a shallow hole? Could you get in that? It's definitely not a deep hole. Junior established that the hole in the master cylinder is in fact a shallow hole, but Tanner seems to be digging himself a deeper hole every day he works on this car. Whatever went wrong with the master has worked its way to the calipers, which I'm being told are now torn apart on a workbench in the back of A1 Auto Parts in Buckeye Lake. So me and June Pup went down to investigate. What in the Sam hell is going on here? Well, I don't know. I explained to Mark that my concern is that his associates have sold my associates silicone brake fluid. I don't think that's the case. I, I, you know, I mean, the brake fluid's brake fluid unless it's dot five and you put dot three in it, then there's a problem. Because my brakes have COVID on that 55 Chevy. It's like a disease. It's spreading throughout the whole brake system. It is. It, it's, it's plaguing the whole thing. Mark feels most likely that the car had silicone brake fluid in it to begin with. You know, I'm pretty sure we didn't put motor oil in there, but well, you know. You can't be sure. Well, in my shop. I'm pretty sure, but but yeah, that's what it looks like. So what's the situation here? Like I've always heard you don't mix silicone brake fluid with regular brake fluid. No. I, I know that, but yes. I mean how do you know what's in there when you buy a car? You, you don't, right? You don't. You have no idea. It looks like it, it kind of smells like it. it, it just there's until you put it in there and start mixing it up, it then that's the only way you find out. So what happens when you mix them together? Well, it gets kind of like, almost like, uh, I don't know, like honey, a little thick. Ugh. And yeah, it's it's not good. It's not good. Because last night when we were bleeding the brakes, I pushed the pedal down, he cracked the bleeder, fluid comes out. And then when I let off the pedal, it's like the piston in the master cylinder would not return for the rear uh, portion of the master cylinder and it just never would pull fluid in. Yeah, it's probably because that little little seal in there is about three times the size it should be. Yep. So I'm back here at the shop. Now, either one of two things has happened. Either the 55 had silicone brake fluid in it to begin with and we put regular brake fluid in it, which I suspect is the case, or it had regular brake fluid in it and someone here has bought a bottle of silicone brake fluid and put silicone brake fluid in the 55. If that is the case, then I have to find said bottle of brake fluid before this disaster transfers to everything else we own here because I don't put it past somebody to pick up a bottle of DOT5 brake fluid if it's here in my shop and start dumping it in everything else we've got here. And that, I don't even wanna think about. So my investigation into shitty brake gate continues. The only thing I can find in my shop is DOT3 standard brake fluid. But then I find this problem. Tanner put this new master cylinder on, but it doesn't look like the one that came off. So this is the brake job that never ends. We place an order for yet another new master cylinder, a new pair of calipers, new brake hoses, two new wheel cylinders, and a new brake hose for the rear. Did your parts come in? parts good we'll see how mark does today with getting us the right parts yeah, yeah let's <laughs> all right well while you're working on this i got a call from jack's wax that truck's done oh looks like that's mark is it mark it's mark answer hello hey so you know this pad you got me as soon as i heard that i knew the 55 wasn't coming off the lift so these brake pads are built for a caliber like slide that has a bracket and these are original drum brake cars and they don't have right a so we've got another problem day 50 of the 55 brake saga yeah 
The guys at Jack's Wax had called this morning to tell me that Bob's truck's done and asked if I'd like to come in and take a look. And I really want to go see the truck, so I call reinforcements. I place a call to the firehouse, and the fire chief was busy working on his Model A at the time. This seems to be the major malfunction around here, Steve. I got a call. Your lord and master. Your brother? Yeah, that guy. Well, that looks all right. At this point, I'm just trying to make sure that the car gets put back together right and gets off the lift. All I was trying to do was work on my Model A. What's the scenario back here? Hey, wait a minute, did you clean those up? Clean what up? The Rams. I'm just trying to make sure that they're gonna fit because he took a wild shot in the dark and getting these. Oh, his wild shot, he knows what he's doing. So now Buckwheat goes to Marks to investigate. What, what is this? I hear from the newest, newest clown down there that you can't look up parts. Clown? No, if they could just read a tape measure and count threads. You can't read a tape measure? I thought threes were fours, man. Poor Scuba Steve. So while the brake gate investigation continues at Mark's, I'm headed in to go check on Bob's truck. Now me and June Pup brought that thing in about a week and a half ago and dropped it off. And like I said, I didn't think it was in that bad of shape. I mean, it was a little dirty from our trip back from New Orleans. And I guess I'd say it was definitely due for some attention under the hood. And I knew that the interior needed some work, but I had no idea how bad this truck really was until I saw the before and after results of Zach Copas and his team from Tidy Rides finish cleaning, detailing, and polishing Bob's GMC. When I showed up at Jack's Wax, Zach airdropped me some videos that he had taken during the detailing process. All I can say is I was blown away. Not only did they detail the truck inside and out, Zach applied a ceramic coating to protect the finish, to make it easier to clean the truck up once we get back from Florida. To be honest, I think I've made a mistake because now it's gonna be harder than ever to say no to buying this 2013 GMC 3500 HD off Uncle Bob. And to be honest with you, he may change his mind about selling it. This truck literally looks feels and smells like brand new from top to bottom and inside out. It's just an absolutely unbelievable transformation on this truck, especially with a brand new set of headlights and an interior that looks brand new. I was honestly in disbelief to the point where I didn't even know what to say. Jared. Yes, sir. Dude, thank here. you. Zach's the guy, man. He is the man. I can't take credit for it. That dude is a magician when it comes to paint. He is a magician on everything. Like underneath the hood, inside the car, uh, inside the truck. I mean, it's like, it's literally like a brand new truck. It really is. I cannot believe it. It's been a farm truck its whole life. It's never been detailed. It uh, looks brand new. I mean, it literally looks brand new. Looks brand new. The paint, uh, we didn't know the paint could look that good. Not I didn't either. I know. Like it looks like a totally different color. There's uh, no one that takes the time like Tidy Rides. Zach Tidy Rides. He's the guy. My man, man, Zach. He's the guy. So do you want to explain to me how you've pulled off this miracle? Yeah, of course. <laughs> we started with a decontamination wash with uh, Jack's Wax uh, shampoo and decom. And then we did a heavy clay bar treatment to get all the grime and stuff out of the paint. We went on to polishing. We did a heavy cut with Perfect Cut here and that got all the scratches and stuff like that out. And then we refined that a little bit more with final finish and then on to the coating stage to protect the paint. So this has had ceramic coating applied to it? Yes. Nice. Dude, it's absolutely gorgeous. And the interior, oh my gosh. This thing has been a farm truck its whole life. And I mean, it's pretty clean for a farm truck, but it was pretty dirty. It was pretty dirty. <laughs> It but was I pretty think, dirty. I think we got it dialed in. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous, man. Thank you so much. Thank you. Zach Copas, Tidy Rides, Columbus, right? Yep. You got a phone number? 614-600-9307. My man. Thanks, Zach. Thank you. Dude, <laughs> you guys are insane with this stuff. This is yeah. the Wax Palace. Yeah, it is the Wax Palace. It all goes to Zach, man. He freaking worked his ass off on it. So let's talk about this black Ford. Let's talk about it. Oh my God, what made you decide to get this? You know, I just saw it online. Uh, I've been looking around for it a little bit and uh, this one came up and down in North Carolina and I don't see them in black very often up here. You never see them in good shape. Oh no, they're, yeah. And the guy that had it, it was from the state of Washington originally and the guy that had it was down, like I said, down in North Carolina and uh, man, it's super clean and he did a bunch of stuff too about three or four years ago. And, wow. Yeah, I just decided to pick it's it up. It's fuel injected, got yeah. air conditioning, four yeah. speed. Yeah. Three-quarter ton high boy. It's a cool looking tractor. A real one. Yeah, 
it is. And uh, I can't wait to drive it. You know, I bought it in the winter, obviously. But well, obviously, we're not going to be driving either one of these anytime <laughs> soon, I don't think. I'm going to wait till next week till the weather clears up, take this thing home, if that's all right with you. Good with me. Exactly. You mind if I let it sit here for a little bit? <laughs> you sit as long as you want. <laughs> okay. By Friday night, we'd finally come to the end of the brake project on the 55 Chevy. At least, I hope. It was pretty obvious Billy had some reservations, though. Well, we've got brakes again, finally. We can go ahead and work on other things. Billy's got another project going on on the back. What do you got there, Junior? Just in case. Just in case? Ooh. Hey, you've got him nervous. He's putting a parachute on the back. I'm writing up a liability letter and making him sign it before <laughs> Saturday morning, Uncle Bob was up bright and early and down at the machine shop, getting ready to do some dyno work on the Junkyard Dog 5.3 again. Currently, there's E85 in the fuel tank and it still has the E85 carburetor on it. Bob went ahead and warmed the engine up on the dyno to get it ready to make our baseline pull to see what the engine makes with today's atmospheric conditions. Once we make our baseline pull for today, we can compare it to last weekend and then swap out the dual plane for a single plane intake. The dyno spit out almost exactly the same horsepower number that it made last weekend with the dual plane. Although the engine put up really good numbers for basically using what I would consider a truck intake manifold, I feel pretty confident that the engine will respond well to a single plane intake. This will allow all eight intake runners an equal opportunity to draw air and fuel directly from the plenum, rather than trying to draw it off an intake runner from an opposing bank of cylinders. Now these intakes work perfectly fine for part throttle performance and towing applications. It's basically a truck manifold, but for all out performance and a racing application, I'll take a single plane intake every day of the week. So the air fuel ratios and the exhaust gas temperature cylinder to cylinder vastly improved over the dual plane intake manifold. Absolutely. Now, I don't know if this intake will make nearly as much mid and low range power. I guess we're going to find out, you know, I mean, I don't know. I have no idea. I've never done this before. Not on an LS. Everything about that pool sounded better. So absolutely zero change in the carburetor or the tune, just simply an intake manifold swap. And I haven't seen the numbers yet, but I could, <laughs> I could hear the numbers as it was making it. Now, as usual with the single plane intake, the engine lost a little bit of horsepower and a little bit of torque at lower engine speeds. However, once we got up into the operating range of the camshaft, the engine took off, producing more power and more torque everywhere else throughout the sweep. All right, so we made a pull on pump E85. It picked up a good bit of power, six or eight horsepower uh, with a single plane with no tuning. Uh, but there's one more thing I wanna to do today. Uh, I wanna try this thing on some Sunoco E85R. Now, I have never dynoed anything with this fuel. Um, the first time I ever used it was when Tony and I uh, took the Malibu and the Mustang, we were both driving around on some E85R down in New Orleans, just in case we wanted to put a bunch of nitrous to them. You know, I was gonna grudge race, I never got to, but I had the fuel there in case I needed to turn both kits on. I had it and the car drove around really good. It felt good on it, but I've never dyno tested anything on Sunoco E85R. So we're gonna do that now. I just flushed the fuel system out. Um, I may have to put a little bit more timing in it. I don't know, we'll see. 
As soon as we fired this thing up on E85R, the engine sounded a little more crisp and you could definitely smell the difference in fuel. You can definitely tell that stuff smells different. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It smells really good. E85R fuel alone only picked up one horsepower. I didn't expect much out of it because it's such a low compression engine, but I was very interested to see what happens when we add some plenum volume to this intake. something new every day don't every we? day yeah you gotta test all all scenarios one thing at a time that was amazing we almost made 450 horsepower on that pool we did and i'll bet you i could if i tried hard enough <laughs> <laughs> all right so on that last pull uh the air fuel shows it's just a little bit on the lean side 13 0 uh, we put a couple new o2 sensors in it and now everything seems to be making more sense uh, both banks seem to be about even, but anyway, um, it shows about 13.0 on air fuel. I think there's still a little bit of power left there, so I went ahead and jetted the carburetor up, and we're going to try again. What do you got now? Uh, brought the air fuel down to about 12.8, and they're almost identical bank to bank. So. All right. So now I'm happy with the fuel trim, uh, and and the horsepower picked up just a little, but it picked up torque throughout the entire range, and so I feel like we're in real good shape now with the carburetor tune. Let's try and add two degrees to it, and just see if I can't crack 450. So we're making progress here, and thankfully it's going the right direction. It's uh, a lot better day at a dyno session when the horsepower and torque numbers keep climbing, and you keep messing with it, and it goes the other way. That's not good. That that makes for a rough day at the dyno. Thankfully, so far we're going the right direction. We haven't uh, had any missteps yet today. Not to say we won't have one soon, but uh, I think we're going to go ahead and make a little timing change here. Put a couple degrees timing in it. I feel like the air fuels are right where they need to be. Uh, we picked up just a little bit of horsepower, but the torque picked up through the entire RPM range and the air fuels dropped from 13.0 to 12.8. So I feel like we're right there. Like we are right there. We're, we're so close to 450 horsepower, this thing. I'd like to get it. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. We're going to try it again. All set? Yeah. So we lost one horsepower putting two degrees in it. So we know we're at the limit. Like that, that's about all there is left in the little guy. I was really trying to hit 450 horsepower, but. Decided to back the timing off four degrees to 36 and try to make one more pull in an attempt to crack 450 horsepower. I asked Ryan to pull two more degrees out to drop the timing to 34 
and try it again. You want to talk about splitting hairs. Look how tight all these pulls are. How many pulls are there, Bob? Uh, we've had 25 total. But these are the last six, seven. Not too bad for an old dinosaur carburetor, huh? Yep. yep That's yep, pretty good. Yep, yep. Yep. Good ATM carburetor. Well, gentlemen, we fell a little bit short of our goal. What, by two horsepower? Less, less than two horsepower. Less than two horsepower. Okay. So, I mean, the, the wind and the air could make two horsepower or take it away. But I feel pretty confident that we've done a good job. Uh, I'm very proud of what we've done with this engine. I'm, I'm really impressed with the little guy. Uh, but I think what people, I hope what they maybe notice is that there's a difference between watching someone else's dyno videos and thinking, okay, well, that's what, that's really what happened. But we've made back to back to back to back to back and shown the overlaying graphs on the, on the computer screen, not hiding anything. And it's different when we're actually here doing it ourselves and we know because we're doing it, that it's for real. Uh, but I don't see very many people doing dyno videos where they show that many back to back pulls and actually making tiny little Very bits small. of progress. And, and the dyno shows it yeah, like, very clear on the oh yeah, and yeah. Whether it's good or bad. Whether it's good or bad. And we had one misstep today where we went a little too far with the timing and it fell off just a little. So we backed it up four degrees from where we were just to find the other side of our previous best and found a new previous best mm -hmm. uh, torque but the horsepower wasn't really going anywhere. So we feel pretty confident that we have found for today with the combination we have, that's about all we're going to get out of it for today. Outside of doing some kind of voodoo, you know, snake oil in the engine crankcase or something like that, you know what I mean? Or, or fudging the numbers on the computer. And we're, I don't want to be known for that. So it is what it is. We made 448 and a little change and 300 and what 90 95 95 that's really really good that is really really good well, let's go home i'm tired <laughs> you tired bob yeah <laughs> saturday all right all right squirrely it's been a while since you had a detail night indeed it has <laughs> <laughs> So obviously we got our truck back. Uh, yes. Did I just say that our truck? It, I really want the truck. <laughs> Can we? I know you do. Some sort of payment plan and get that yeah, truck. <laughs> one big one. Yeah. So we got the truck back from Jack's Wax. It's sitting out here. It looks absolutely gorgeous. It looks brand new. It looks literally brand new. It's ten years old. It's got one hundred and thirty-six thousand miles. It's been a farm truck its whole life. Mm -hmm. It's never been detailed until now. <laughs> But, oh, my gosh, did they do a good job. Thank you, guys, to uh, Jack's Wax and Tidy Rides, mm -hmm. Zach Copas, and, oh, my gosh, everybody yeah. at Jack's Wax. They, they're such a huge help. Yep. And we're getting ready to go to Sick Week. Well, I'm getting ready to go. You're Yay. staying. <gasps> oh, wait. So uh, You yeah. said that out loud. <laughs> I kind of like it sometimes when, like, the whole family just goes, and then I have a minute to just relax and... Where's Francois at? I'm going to have to check that guy. I think he made his way back home. Thank God. All right, so you're not going to be hanging out with nobody but you the know, dogs and maybe... I'm just going to hold down the fort. Me and Bucko will, will handle everything here and uh, take care of the pups. And, All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so you guys have fun. Oh, yeah. I think. I, uh, to me, okay, I'm going to be honest. It sounds stressful to me. Like the whole... No trailers, drive from this track to this track to this track. Like, all the comforts that you guys usually have. I will have. Away. Power steering, power brakes, <laughs> air conditioning, heat. What more could I ask for? Well, when I say comforts, I'm thinking me, 
the dog. Well, yeah. The trailer. Right. A bathroom. A cooler and all the food. Like, all those comforts. You guys are going to be on your own winging it. So, yeah, 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 good yeah. Luck. <laughs> so, if it goes well, maybe I'll participate next year. Uh, let's talk about this junkyard dog engine. Not your typical thing that you would normally No, it's do. not my thing. The LS thing. No, 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 no. But... but I've had a good time yeah. learning and helping Bob and helping Ryan up there. You can teach an old dog new tricks. Yeah, well, maybe. So we're giving that engine away. The The engine that's on the dyno, it's made 400, almost 450 horsepower so far. Almost. We got real close. We'll call it 450. Mm -hmm. But it's Bob's junkyard dog engine. Mm -hmm. And we're giving this thing away. And this time, this giveaway, by the way, is my giveaway. It's not SRC. It's Old Man's Garage. Yes. And our merch orders are up to date. We've been taking a lot of flack because Billy's stuff's a little bit behind. But our stuff, no. I think the SRC stuff is just about caught up. Okay, good. Because yeah. I'm tired of taking flack shells. <laughs> Pilot to Bombardier. We got problems. <laughs> No, just it's a, it is what it is. It is he got behind is. at Christmas, but our stuff's up to date, and these are brand new designs. Look that, at that yeah. So we've got one with the fifty five and my Nova, mm -hmm. and they have all our sponsor logos, the people that help us mm -hmm. make these things happen. And then you've Malibu. got the Malibu, mm -hmm. and everybody's been asking for a Malibu shirt yes. for a while. Yeah. And I'm taking the Malibu to sick week it's headed to florida mm -hmm. you guys will be able to buy these shirts order them online and these are pre-order this yeah, and this so, uh, please allow possibly three i'll say three to four weeks just yeah don't expect amazon time frame here it's yeah 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 these are pre-order because yeah. we don't know we have no idea how many it's going to go yeah. but these are pre-order mm -hmm. but you don't have to buy just this these. design or this design any order or the devil dog design Yes. You're not happy about the devil dog design. I don't like the red eyes on the devil I dog. I like the red eyes on it's the like devil a dog. dog. All right, so the junkyard dog <laughs> engine design, Nikki's not happy with because she, she thinks the dog looks too mean. <laughs> she thought we should use like a cartoon puppy dog. Yeah, like I'm like, with the spike, uh, I'm like dog. dude, we're not trying to promote an engine for three year old kids. Okay. Like these are adult. <laughs> I hope they're adult. Most of them are adult. They should be. But anyway, you're not happy with the devil dog design, but I like it. Everybody else seems to like it. So devil dog stays. You're out on that one. <laughs> okay. But, but, but basically. I know it's not an oven mitt. You know, oh, here we listen. go. Here we My go. My oven mitt sold out. <laughs> yeah. What? 20 of them? <laughs> no. Okay. So. Well, we'll see how many devil dog shirts I sell. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. But we're not doing potholders and can koozies for the devil dog design that's just these shirts and they're and those sure the devil dog design is pre-order the malibu is pre-order this is pre-order but this time anything on my website yeah. you can order that's we, in stock yeah we have uh we have other stuff we've got the cups are, the tumblers are back those are pretty I yeah like that. we've got three different designs of those mm -hmm. um we still have 427 um t-shirts and hoodies we have the regular omg stuff so okay. yeah uh any order from january 20th to february 29th any order and then get you entered yeah. for a chance to win the, the junkyard dog devil dog engine that's what we're just gonna call we're just gonna call it the devil dog engine yeah. The junkyard dog. Okay. Engine. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So, uh, and then what we will do is uh, random.org. We'll pick an order, an order number. number. And okay. And that's your winner. All right. So you're yep. going to draw that on? Uh, probably about three days after the 29th. So like February. No, that would be March. So that would be like March, let's say second or third. Okay. Yeah. So March 2nd or 3rd, mm -hmm. we're going to draw the winner mm -hmm. for the devil dog engine. You didn't catch that, did you? Again. I don't even like, I just don't, can we show them the dog I wanted to use? All right, so the, the Junkyard Dog Engine winner will be drawn uh, in March mm -hmm. as first a week. February winner, yeah. the first week of March yep. for the month of February, mm -hmm. and you can pick anything on the website that's in stock, mm -hmm. but these are pre-order, yep. so if you order one of these that's pre-order and something that's in stock, then you're still waiting on the pre-order. Yeah. If Let's you, make if that you clear. need something right away for a gift, then 
not one of these. An in-stock <laughs> item. Yeah. And then just make a separate order for the, yeah. so that we can ship your regular in-stock stuff out. All right, awesome. so anything that's on, on the website that's actually in stock, mm -hmm. anything on the website, gets you a chance to win. Yep. All right. I think that's about it for tonight, other than uh, I can't speak on what we discussed earlier, but they're going to see it in the next video. And so far, you're not throwing a fit. On what? But you're not throwing a fit about it yet. No, I like it way better than what came home from Texas. Texas. <laughs> You'll enjoy this other one more. Maybe.